Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we're continuing our discussion of TTL metering. Last week we saw that our camera's built-in light meter averages everything to a middle gray to determine proper exposure. Well, I also mentioned that because of this, our meter can be fooled. Now this week we're going to take a closer look at TTL metering and learn how to correct our camera's errors using something called exposure compensation. But first, let's take a look at our question. Jill asked, what is exposure compensation and how does it work? Well, Jill, exposure compensation is a feature on your camera that allows you to tell your camera, hey, take what you think is the correct exposure and overexpose or underexpose by a certain amount. Now, this is controlled by a little dial on your camera, and for the exact location, you need to look at your user manual because it's different on different cameras. But generally speaking, it's the big dial on the back of a Canon camera, or there's a plus minus button on different cameras that you push and use another dial to sort of set your exposure compensation. But remember, you need to look at your user guide to know what it is for your camera. Okay, well, none of this stuff is really going to make sense unless we put it into practice. So let's go to the studio, and I'll show you some cool stuff. All right, before we show you a practical application of exposure compensation, first I want to show you how our camera meters incorrectly sometimes. Now for a complete explanation of that, make sure you watch last week's episode on through the lens metering. Uh, and it talks all about the 18% gray stuff that I'm going to show you now. So if this doesn't make sense, watch last week's episode. Okay, first I'm going to take a shot of a uh, black panel that I've attached to the wall. I'm going to fill the frame of my camera, take a shot. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the white wall, fill the frame, take a shot, and we will show you those uh, side by side and you'll see both of them are almost identical. They're just going to be gray because the camera is metering for 18% gray. So uh, I have my camera set to aperture priority mode. I'm shooting at 2.8. My ISO is 800. So let me take those two shots and show you them side by side. It's pretty amazing. So first I'm going to uh, take my camera, point it at this black panel here and take a shot. Great, and as expected, it comes out totally gray. I'm gonna take a shot of this white wall right next to it, and I'll take a shot. And as expected, that also comes out totally gray. So look at these two shots side by side. You can see both totally gray. Now, if we look at the histogram here, first I'll show you the black wall. And here it is. You can see that the histogram shows that the black wall is metering right in that 18% gray area, which is what we expect. And the white wall, the exact same thing. It's right in the middle there, 18% gray, which is not correct. We need the white wall to be metering as white, and we need the black panel to be metering as black. So how do we fix that? Well, we can use our exposure compensation. So this black wall here, the camera expects gray, so it's actually overexposing our image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my exposure compensation on my camera to uh, say, OK, camera, since you don't know what you're looking at, take what you think is the correct exposure and underexpose it by a certain amount. Now, I know from experience that this is overexposed by about two stops, and to know how far or, uh, it's over or underexposed, use your histogram, and that'll give you a good idea. So I'm going to use it, my exposure compensation and put it at negative two and tell it to shoot that again. And what it'll do is it'll underexpose by two stops. So let me take this shot again, and when I do that, bam, it comes up as a, a black panel, and you can see on the histogram here, it shows up correctly. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the white. Now the white was underexposed. It went from white to gray, which is underexposed. So I'm going to set my exposure compensation to plus two and see how that works out. So again, I'm going to set my exposure compensation to plus two. I've done that. And now I'll take a shot. And you can see once again, we have here on the histogram, we have a white wall, and it shows on our histogram as white, which is what we would expect. Okay, now we're gonna post all these pictures to the Adorama Learning Center with all the settings so you can see this, because I know I'm zipping along at a pretty good pace, but that's a, a really good illustration of how our camera gets things wrong, and now we can use exposure compensation to fix it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring a model into the mix, and we're gonna show you this in more of a real life scenario. So um, our model's gonna be out here in just a second. We're gonna shoot her in some really dark clothes, and we're gonna shoot her in some really light clothes to show you how you can use exposure compensation to fix incorrect metering in your camera. 
Now let's take a look at a practical application of what we just showed you. I have a model behind me. Her name is Erica Little. We've asked Erica to dress in a black dress. She's got dark hair and we have her on a black background. And so that's going to be basically the same thing as when we shot the black panel earlier. And so our camera is going to look at this and overexpose everything by just a little bit. So I'm going to first take a shot on full auto mode. Again, I'm in aperture priority mode. So Erica, look right at me. And there she is. Great. All right. Now when I look at that, yep. It's overexposed Thursday. So I need to take my exposure compensation and set it down. And so I'm going to set this down to an exposure compensation of negative one. Now that's not as much as we did before because her face is actually helping us get some balance. So I'll, I'll try that and make sure it looks good. I'll use my histogram to double check it. And if it doesn't look great, then I'll use maybe a negative two. So let me take another shot here and I'm rolling my uh, exposure compensation down to negative one. Look right at me, Erica. Great. And just for uh, fun, I'm going to do it at negative two there. And so that way I uh, make sure that I have uh, two shots right in a row. So I'm going to take a look at those. And when we look, we can see that the negative two is a little bit uh, underexposed. Negative one looks good. So we have a choice there. Now let's show you the same thing, except for this time we're going to have Erica put on a bunch of white clothes. I'm going to shoot her on a really white background to show you the exact opposite. Our camera will underexpose and we'll use exposure compensation to fix that. Okay, now I'm going to show you something really wacky to illustrate how finicky our camera's metering is. Erica is behind us and we have her uh, in a white top with a white background, but she has really dark hair and so we have her hair down. Now I'll take a picture of her with her hair down and that dark is going to help give us a correct exposure because it's not completely white. But we're going to have her put her hair in a ponytail. When we do that, you'll see that the exposure shifts by about two thirds of a stop which is really wacky because the light hasn't changed. And we can fix that with our exposure compensation. So let me show you this. So first, Erica, hair down exactly like that. Beautiful. And that meter's at 2.8 and 500. So go ahead and put your hair up in a ponytail. So 2.8, 500 of a second. Now watch what happens now that we have Erica with her hair in a ponytail. Exactly the same thing. And I'm going to shoot you here. Um, and beautiful, just like that. Perfect. And this is metering at 800th of a second. So that's a two thirds stop difference. The only thing that we changed was Erica's hair. So uh, it's because there's so much more white in the scene and that's why our camera is over, I mean, sorry, underexposing a little bit there. Sort of like shooting that white wall. But if we know that this is happening, we can again go in here, we can look at our histogram. We can see, oh yeah, that is just uh, way too off. So we can set our exposure compensation to go from the gray that we're getting up to white by setting the exposure compensation up plus two thirds of a stop. So I'll do that right now. I'll take this guy and I'm going to make it go up two thirds of a stop. And when we do that, I'm so yeah, two thirds of a stop. And now that's at 500 of a second. And there we go. Click. And now we have a correct exposure. So exposure compensation can help you in drastic areas with all black. It can help you with subtle changes when we have a shift like in hair or something like that when you know the camera isn't getting it right. It's really useful for things like shooting weddings when you have a guy in a black tux or a bride in a white gown uh, when you know your camera is exposing for gray and it should be exposing for white and black. Well, now that we know what exposure compensation is, let me tell you how it works. So I've hooked my camera up to this big screen and I'll show you how your camera uh, uses either a shutter speed or an aperture value to uh, set the exposure compensation. So uh, on the screen here, I am in aperture priority mode. You can see at the lower left uh, side of the screen, there's a little A there saying I'm in aperture priority mode. And I'm just shooting a gray wall here. And you can see that my shutter speed is 60th of a second and my aperture value is F4. Now, if I want to change my exposure compensation on this camera here, I'll push the plus minus button and I'll roll a little dial. But I'm just going to push this uh, plus minus button here and you'll see at the bottom center of our big screen here, we have the plus minus square that shows up, meaning I'm in my exposure compensation mode. And on the right, there's a 0.0, .0 saying right now there is no exposure compensation. But when I start rolling the dial, you'll see that that changes. So I'm going to start rolling this to the right and that's going to change my exposure compensation to say uh, underexposed. And I know I'm underexposing because there's a minus right where that little plus minus used to be. Now it's a minus. And it's saying underexposing by one stop. Now also notice that the shutter speed is what changed. So in, in aperture priority mode, when I change my exposure compensation, the camera is compensating by changing the shutter speed. Now I'll set this back to zero. So exposure compensation in aperture priority mode, aperture will stay the same. The shutter is going to be faster or slower to compensate. Now if I go to a different mode, here I'm going to go to um, 
uh, shutter priority mode, now the opposite is going to happen. So now when I do uh, exposure compensation, my aperture value will change because of course we want our shutter to be a specific speed. So I'm gonna push this button here for my exposure compensation. And when I roll this up and down, you'll see that the aperture is changing to uh, set our exposure compensation. So again, if you're in shutter priority mode and you change your exposure compensation, your aperture value is going to change. If you're in aperture priority mode and you set your exposure compensation, your shutter is going to change. Now, what about if you're shooting in manual mode? So I'm gonna flip over here in manual mode really fast. Now in manual mode, if I hit exposure compensation, I get that plus or minus, and you'll see that it just sort of says, hmm, nothing is changing. Because what it's doing is it's saying I can set my scale and then I can adjust to it. The easy way to do exposure compensation in manual mode is you're just going to over or underexpose and you're going to roll in either your aperture value or your shutter speed de depending on which one you want to change. So for example here, if I want to go in here and say, well, my shutter is what I want to stay the same, I'll just underexpose by two thirds of a stop or I'll go back to zero. That's the exact same thing as exposure compensation because I'm saying take what you think is right and underexpose or I'll use my uh, shutter dial here to change my shutter speed to either under or overexpose and so I can do it that way. So in manual mode really you're just doing it yourself by over or underexposing because it's essentially the exact same thing and that is how exposure compensation works. Well, thanks, Jill, for that terrific question. Remember, if you have questions about uh, photography or photography-related gear, please send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining us this week. I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.